Hey! So welcome to um, my stream. This is Art Live Lesson with Sarah Goski. That's me. And today we're going to be doing drawing. So you'll see I've got my pencils here. Um, and I am using, the set that I'm using is, let's just take my name off of that. <laughs> I have to label my stuff for when I teach my live, like my in face-to-face -face classes, um, because everybody's got the same set. But anyway, it says uh, Koei Noor is the brand, and it's the Giaconda art set. So here's the thing: if you don't have this, that's okay. Um, you can use a number two pencil, which I also have here just for show. I'm not going to be using a number two pencil, but I will talk about it as we go through. Um, I'll, I'll tell you if you're using a number two pencil, how that's going to, um, like what you need to do differently than whatever pencils I'm using. Another name for number two pencil is HB. So if you go to the store and you have to buy one pencil, um, you can get this now. It seems silly sometimes. I talk about this um, to pay a dollar fifty or whatever for something that you can get for you know twenty cents. But these are a little bit better quality. The lead doesn't fall out and things like that. So okay, so I've got my set, which comes with a kneaded eraser. Um, but I additionally like to have a couple different kinds of rubber erasers. Um, they're just better sometimes than a kneaded eraser. I've got a sketchbook and that is it. So you will notice down in the bottom left hand side of the screen that there is a uh, Discord channel link. There's also a link on, uh, there should be on my main page of my of Twitch, like my Twitch page. Um, and you can go straight to it. I encourage everyone to join this Discord server. Um, this is where we would upload f pictures of the images that you do and it can be the artwork that we work on today and we can critique that at the end of class or it can be uh, like whatever artwork you're working on you can post that if you would like personal feedback from me so um, join that everybody is welcome and we mostly just talk about art there um, and that's it. So let's go ahead and get started. Today, as you can see from the title, we're going to be talking about atmospheric perspective. Another word for this is aerial perspective. Oh, that is one thing I meant to mention. Sorry. On the Discord channel, I do post the reference photo that I'm working from today. So if you want that, you know, to have that up, it's kind of like doing a jigsaw puzzle without the picture. Sometimes it's kind of difficult. So if you would like that picture, then go out to the Discord channel and I've posted it for today. Okay, getting back to where we were going. Um, atmospheric perspective is also called aerial perspective and it's basically the idea that um, you create an effect that makes your image look like it's receding into the background. This is generally done with mountains, which is what we're gonna be doing today, hills and mountains. And the idea is that you change the texture and you change the value, um, which is light versus dark or medium. Um, that's your value and um, your shading. And that will create an effect that looks like, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that looks like the image is going into the background and gives it a 3D effect. So perspective is all about like all kinds of perspective, whether you're talking about linear or atmospheric, you know, these are types of, it's basically a way for your drawing to look three dimensional. So um, today we're gonna be doing atmospheric perspective. Um, a couple other things that we're going to be covering <clears throat> is we're going to talk about uh, our landscape zones, which are the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. And then we're also going to talk about light direction, which I have talked about in other drawings, but we're going to really discuss it today um, because we're going to have like this cool little branch in our foreground that is outside of the picture. It breaks the... Um, 
it's going to break the boundary of our picture. Okay, so um, techniques that we'll be using today are tonal shading, which if you watched my Raven episode, we talked about tonal shading, and that is the idea that instead of creating a line, you create an edge, meaning that you shade up to your figure or whatever it is that you're drawing, you shade up to it, which creates a boundary and creates an edge without you actually drawing a line. That's tonal shading. Um, linear shading, which is where you actually just draw a line. And then uh, stippling, which is where you, it's little dots. Stippling is lots of little dots. Um, that's also called pointillism. So if you want to look that up, um, it's pretty cool. And then blending, which we do in most of ours. Excuse me just a moment. <clears throat> Something's blooming right now because I'm getting the, the drips. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and start. Um, for those of you who are using a, some type of pencil set, if you have different, um, different varieties of pencils, we are going to start with a 2B. <clears throat> the B stands for bold and... It's generally how dark you can go, but it's also softer versus the H, which is hard. And then, of course, your number two pencil is an HB, which means it's right in the middle. Um, we are, even though we're doing a landscape today, we actually are going to be um, putting our paper in the portrait orientation. And that's because we're going to have that twig in the foreground, which is going to take up, you know, it's longer than it is wide. So it's going to take up some space. Okay, so starting out with your 2B pencil or your number 2 pencil, if that's what you're using, we're going to go ahead and draw a rectangle inside uh, the, the paper. So let's start, we're going to start probably about one and a half inches. Now, when you're drawing this line, very, very lightly, by the way, um, not too too dark because we are going to be blending into this later. This does not have to be perfect. Um, I know that it can be intimidating sometimes to draw straight lines or to have to try to draw circles. Um, but this does not have to be perfect. And in fact, it's almost better if it's a little wavy. Just try to keep your hand as steady as you can and it'll look pretty good. But the reason it's not a bad idea if it's not perfect is because we are going to be blending into it later. And um, so we want it to kind of have a natural edge. So that's not a problem. I mean, mine is nowhere near straight. So just to give you an idea, because it's a little bright. There you can see my line, how light it is. Okay. I'm going to move these up. All right. Now, um, we're going to go ahead. We're not doing anything, no detail yet, but we're going to go ahead and sketch in our sapling. So that's going to start almost to the bottom left uh, uh, of the page. Oh, you cannot see my finger. So it's going to start right about here. And we're just trying to get an idea. We'll add detail later. But we're trying to get an idea of where everything's going to be so that when we're drawing the rest of our landscape, we don't color over this area because we are going to have light. Shade over, I should say, not color. There will be no color today. Just gray and white. Now, when I do my branches, I mean, you can use the reference photo, which is what I'm doing, but I don't put them right across from each other. These happen to be, but I'm trying to keep them kind of catty cornered so that it gives it a more natural look. Because in real life, your branches are not perfectly symmetrical on each side. Symmetrical 
in case you don't know, symmetrical means that it's exactly the same on both sides. So my hands next to each other with this line being like the mirror line look symmetrical, right? Now if I folded my fingers up, now it's not symmetrical. So that's, that's all that means for those of you who are new to that terminology. And I'm still keeping this, the pressure pretty light here. I'm not, just not pressing very hard. Coming down again, I don't want to be symmetrical, so I'm going to come down a little farther before I put in another little, little bud, a little tiny branch. Now, this is going to curve into the picture, the, into that frame that we created earlier and it's going to continue over the top. So I'll just keep going here. Got another little branch coming out. All right. I'm just taking my time. Some of you may know I've got a couple little what I call my classroom rules. And one of them is my number two rule is don't rush. And that's important because it's important to take your time when you're doing art because you want it to look intentional. You want it to look how you want it to look, you know, without lots of mistakes, slip ups, I should call them slips. Um, I just learned some new terminology about design recently and that slips and mistakes are actually different. So a slip is, you know, when you, you unintentionally mess up mistake is when you, you just made a poor decision that your intended outcome might, you might've wanted it to be different, but it was the action that you took was what you meant to do. It just wasn't a good action or an effective one, I should say. Almost done. Now, um, I'm going to have one of my branches kind of going off the page and that just creates a little bit of visual interest. So the viewer looks at it and says, wonder what's happening. Maybe not consciously, but some part of their brain wonders and that creates interest. Good. Something I want to mention is feel free to use the chat here to um, ask me any questions. I don't usually go to Discord until the end, so any questions posted there will not get answered until the end. But if you ask questions in the chat here, um, then your uh, I can answer them as we go. I'm just going to hold this up. It's a little bright, so I just want to hold this up so you can see. There you go. All right.
Now we're going to add our hills. Now our first hill is in the foreground and it's going to take up the most amount of space on our page. So let's do maybe, I'm looking at about a third, about a third. And we're just gonna give it two little bumps. You can add a little bit more pressure here. It's not gonna matter as much. I mean, we will be doing some tonal um, shading where we blend into it, but it doesn't, your pressure is not as important there. The next group is going to be our middle ground. And so that, going to start that's going to be a little it's not going to take up quite as much space probably about it's a little over halfway I'm doing it right above this branch that I did like right kind of in the corner there and it kind of has one hill on the side now our last one is going to be the smallest section and it's going to start lower on the left side, maybe about an inch and a half up from the middle ground. And it's gonna come to probably about, I'm gonna, one, two, maybe one and a half inches. Okay. I want that to start sloping upwards sooner. So I'm gonna redraw that line. Now you do not have to erase. I'm going to go ahead and erase just so it doesn't confuse you guys, but you don't have to because we'll be blending that in later. If you, if you drew it like I did. Okay. So we have our foreground, our middle ground, and our background, and our sky will be part of our background. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start blending in the sky. I'm still using the 2B pencil. If you're using a number 2 pencil, we're going to start with a light pressure and then we'll, we'll gradually increase the pressure. Um, this is very good to do if you do um, anything with colored pencils. This is something where if you want a richer, more saturated color, you start very light and then you just do layers and you just keep adding layers. So this is something that you would use anytime you do any type of pencil drawings, even colored pencil. So I'm going to start by just lightly sketching my pencil across the sky. Now, because we drew our twig there, our branch, we want to skip over that section. If you color into it a little bit, it's not a big deal. I keep saying color. If you shade into it a little bit, it's not a big deal. But uh, generally, you want to try to skip that so that when we go to do our highlights, we're not having to erase out too much. And try to go as close to the edge as possible. You'll have to slow down a little when you get to the edge so that you don't go over it. Now I'm going to see if I can get even lighter as I come down where I'm barely touching the page at this point. Just turn the light on my camera on. I'm going to see if that helps any. Helps you guys see. I did not realize it was off. So very light, very light pressure. Now we're going to use our um, blending stick 
if you do not have a blending stick, first of all, you can buy these separately at this at like a craft store. Um, even Walmart has these. Usually they come in like a two pack or something. Um, but all this is is newsprint that has been wrapped very tightly. So you can actually use your finger um, as a spreader or you can crumple up a piece of paper. And what I do, I'll just show an example. I've got a little piece of notebook paper here. Okay, so you crumple up a piece of paper and I like to crumple it first because then that gives it like a text, it, it gives it a, where it's not, it's not flat across. Then I just take my finger and put my finger like inside the paper and wrap it around that like that. Now I'm going to use my spreader just because I like using this shape. If you are using a spreader and you do have a kit like this, um, notice that there are sepia tones, the brown, the red brown tones. Um, you don't want black if because you will use your spreader for those so you don't want black getting in that so I designate a black side and a red side so you can see my red side I haven't even used yet in this particular set so I'm just I try to keep that separate so that for future drawings it doesn't mingle okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my spreader almost like a pencil I'm just going in and and spreading you don't have to press very hard all the spreader does is that wherever there's white space on your paper, it fills that in. So it just gives it a more even blended tone because you're not seeing your pencil strokes anymore. Again, goes more slowly as you come to the branch. Try to keep your direction going about the same you, you can turn and like start going up and down, but try to keep your direction approximately the same because um, that will be noticeable. Now I am pressing a little bit harder up towards the top. And if you're like me and you have a dirty spreader because you've used it for other things, that just gives it, it makes it even darker. Now I'm loosening, lightening my pressure a little bit. You can also go in like kind of a, like if you're in a small space, you can go in a circular motion, um, like circular motion will um, sometimes make it easier to get into those tiny spaces. Now you can use the side of your spreader. I'm not going to because I have all of this branch in the way, so I don't want the um, I don't want to go over the branch after I so carefully tried to avoid it. It is okay if you go over a little because spreader marks are actually much easier to erase than pencil marks because it's more even. I think it doesn't go as deep in the paper either. So it just generally is easier to um, erase. So we can erase out our lines from where the spreader has gone over, over them. Okay, now I'm going to go over the top here with my 2B pencil and I'm going to make it even darker. Now I'm still just doing sketchy lines, but remember, like I said, we're just layering. So I'm adding another layer just at the top. I realize now what I forgot to bring, which is my 
uh, pencil sharpener. So I will have to go grab that here in a minute. Just bringing it down into the sky, even though I didn't color shade, I did not shade in the sky. I'll get it one of these days, guys. I'm used to working with kids, young kids, seven or eight, and so I say color a lot because that's a term that you know they're familiar with. But I do need to break that habit since I'm not just talking to kids now. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to come in with my eraser and just lightly dab at the bottom. That takes out some of that color that I put in, uh, shade. <laughs> One of these days I'll get it. So I'm just very lightly dabbing it and that just erases some of it but not all of it and then I'm gonna come in with the blender again <sighs> remember always blow do not wipe because when you wipe that can wipe your pencil marks um, in a direction you may not want them to go so I'm gonna come back in this also gives the sky kind of a splotchy maybe cloudy appearance because we will be adding some clouds here momentarily. We're gonna be using our eraser to add clouds. Okay. Now, you can use for this next part, if you have a kneaded eraser, You have a kneaded eraser. <coughs> you can mold it into kind of a flat edge there, or you can use a bigger eraser or even just the, the back of your pencil if that's what you're using, a number two pencil. And we're going to come in and we're going to just put some erase out some kind of sketchy clouds. I'm not, I'm not being too, like I'm just moving side to side and I'm not being too precise. Some light little clouds. That's pretty good. I'm just going to come in here with my blender and just blend right around those. And that will kind of define the clouds a little bit more. This is that tonal shading now by pulling our color right up to the uh, right up to the edge. We're creating an edge versus a line. Good. Just see that. Okay. 
Now I um, changed the direction of my microphone because the last um, the last stream that I did was I felt like I couldn't hear myself sometimes when I would go down to paint. So I've changed uh, where my microphone is and the direction a little bit so it's more in line with um, with where I'm drawing. So. If anybody hears any inconsistencies or you have any trouble hearing me, please, please do not hesitate to mention it in chat because that's how, um, that's how I get better. That's how I improve. All right. Go ahead and put our spread up, spreader back. All right, now we're going to do our background mountain shape. We're gonna still use that 2B pencil and I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, get a pencil sharpener because already my pencil is starting to get a little worn. back. So I've talked about pencil sharpeners before, but the one I'm using today is just, it's actually a makeup pencil sharpener, which I think I got this from Ulta maybe, but you can get them from Sally's or any like beauty supply store. And they're pretty inexpensive there versus getting one from an art store. Um, but they're really good quality because makeup pencils a lot of times have wax and other types of materials in them. And so they're made for sturdier pencils. So um, I like using the makeup pencil sharpener. I use makeup pencils too, but not to draw. So I'm just going to sharpen this into my trash can. Better. All right, now I'm going to apply medium pressure. The same goes for if you're using a number two pencil. I'm gonna apply medium pressure right up to the edge of the mountain, the top of the mountain. Again, staying generally with the direction of the flow of the mountain. So the mountains curving and going up so I'm, I'm doing that as well. Now I'm doing more pressure at the top. I'm going to do the same thing we did in the sky which is that we will get lighter pressure as we go down. So I'm keeping my pressure kind of a medium. The more you draw, the more you get used to how much you have to actually press down. That's just, it just takes experience to know that. What medium feels like, what light feels like. I mean, you can guess for sure. Okay, so now I'm going to start lightening my pressure just a little bit. Just, we're going to create a very small gradient effect. Gradient, if you haven't taken one of my classes before, because I talk about it a lot, it's probably my absolute favorite technique. I use it in my own artwork quite a bit. But gradient is going from light to dark in um, value. Or dark to light, either way but you're going from a, a one strong value to another strong value, blending it in the middle. That is a gradient. This is the opposite of contrast. Contrast is where you have, uh, or high contrast rather, is where you have like a, um, a, a dark value and a light value or medium value next to each other. Dark and light create the most contrast. And then of course your, um, the closer you get to medium or the, the other value, the less the contrast is. And then you go back to having a gradient. All right. So I've got my spreader. 
Again, you can use your pencil or, I mean, uh, <laughs> you can use your finger. I said pencil. You can use your finger or you can use um, a piece of paper like I showed you before. Now with the atmospheric perspective, we actually talked about this a few weeks ago. I'm trying to think, I think it was a watercolor class. We did a watercolor with the mountain range in the background and I talked a little bit about atmospheric perspective and that's why I chose this class because we discussed it. Now I was originally going to do this last Tuesday, but then when I realized that it was Edgar Allan Poe's birthday, the previous Sunday, I said no, I've got a raven. We're going to do a raven in honor of Poe because he is one of my favorite writers. A weird dude, but a very, very talented writer. All right. So as you can see, even though we created a line, because we blended up to that edge, it created our tonal shading. All right. Now, we are going to create texture in the uh, middle ground here. So, um, let's see. I want to use, I guess I'll, I'll continue using the 2B pencil. I think that's fine. Um, so we're going to start using, we're going to color, we're going to shade <laughs> a little bit darker because this is closer to us. I'm just going to outline it a little bit so that it stands apart. This is our linear shading because we're actually going to create like a dark line that goes right up to our background mountain. and then we'll blend in underneath it. I might still do a little bit of a gradient. I might make it darker coming up to that. So now what I want to do, I do want to start creating a little bit of texture. So I'm going to start, once I have everything colored in, shaded in, <laughs> I need to put a big sign right in front of, like hanging on my computer screen that says shade, not color. <laughs> so I can remember. But anything, anyway, after every, but everything is shaded in, we are going to make little um, circular motions. Now, here I got pretty light down here. So we're going to actually do a second layer. Trying to take my time as I come, come up to the 
edge here. All right, now I'm doing my second layer. And this will just make it even darker. Now, when we go to blend, that'll darken it as well because it's actually going to fill in all these little white spots that to our eye is making it lighter. called visual blending. So let's say you had a crosshatch pattern of pink stripes and blue stripes. Um, if you stood far away from it, your eye would see purple because it would visually blend those two colors together even though they're not actually blended. The same thing happens where I'm creating gray lines, but I've got the white underneath and so from uh, you know, a reasonable just viewing distance, my eye is making it seem lighter than it actually is. So the blending helps resolve that. So we're going to go ahead and get our blending stick and come in. And you can see this area here that I just did already looks darker than everything around it because I've, I've blended. I am kind of doing an up and down motion here. Um, oh, and I want to do a circular motion. We're going to create a little bit of, so let's do circular. Circular motion. Almost forgot about that because I want to create a little bit of texture. So circular motion. What this does is it's going to make it so some areas are more blended looking than others. And that creates texture. So of course, when you're doing a 2D image like this and you're trying to make it look 3D, you have to use things like the direction or the types of marks you make you know, your brush stroke or your pencil stroke. You have to use those to create the effect because it's not actually coming off the paper, but you might want people to think that it is, you know, that's what gives it the 3D effect. Okay, so that has created, I'm gonna hold this up so you guys can see. But see how it's created like a texture where it's not as smooth as this is up here. Just blending that there. Okay, now. So using our number two, uh, I mean, excuse me, our 2B pencil, some of you are using number two, but using our 2B pencil, we are going to create trees at the top here. We're going to give the impression of trees at the top of our um, foreground hill. All right, so what I'm going to do, let's see, how do I want to do this? Okay, so first we're just going to do some lines, some different lines coming out, some are shorter, some are taller. Some are closer together. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is really tight little circles just to give the appearance that there are, let's see, I'm going to hold this up close so you can see what I'm doing. 
So I'm just doing tiny little circles. It's basically almost like dots. And I'm just coming out like branches in different different ways. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it down, but I wanted you to see what I was doing. It just gives the illusion that there are trees coming up over the top of the hillside. Illusion, that's such a great word. Illusion. I'm not really coming down into my mountain at all because, um, like I said, we're just we're going to be doing something different for that area. So based on time, I think this drawing isn't going to be very long. Some of my drawings are not. Um, the Raven was a little longer, um, probably mostly because of the Poe trivia, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, but that was the first time I was ever doing that lesson plan, and, and so it just took a little longer to really get everything the way I wanted it to. But this I don't think is even going to be a full two hours, so we'll see. You guys may luck out and we get out under and under the two hour mark. But we're doing good on time, so. Okay. I may or may not even do stretches today. We'll see. All right, so. Okay, so we've got our kind of fake trees there. Um, now, now what we're going to do is we're going to, I guess we kind of need to shade it in first. So let's shade, let's go ahead and throw some shade down, but not of the nasty kind. We don't like that kind of shade. You can actually use medium to hard pressure now. You don't want to press too hard, especially if you're using a number two pencil, because the number two does have some of the H in it, and so it um, it gives you more definitive lines. And we don't necessarily want that because we want to be able to blend. Let's go ahead first. So let's just say medium pressure, how about that? Because we can always go over it again with another layer. So this is our largest part that we have to blend and, and shade in. And if you notice, I don't know if you can tell from there, but if you notice, I'm not being too picky about if I go outside my lines. Um, I mean, you don't want to go way too far over, but it's not the end of the world. Whoa, well, there went my 
microphone, so I don't know what that sounded like to everybody, but hopefully it didn't blow your ears out or anything. <laughs> I probably am going to need to get one of those microphone, what are those things called? Like the, you know, they're hinged and you can have your microphone like I don't know, hanging rather than on the desk. I like the desk one because it makes me feel like a podcaster and I actually really enjoy podcasting. I have not officially started my podcast, but I will probably at some point, once this, once the art classes are pretty much, you know, old hand for me where, you know, I'm doing them regularly and, and, um, I'm used to that. I'm going to probably start my podcast. Now, it will not be art. I'm not saying I won't ever do anything about art because I might want to sometimes talk about things in art history. But um, generally, that will probably be more health-related because some of you may or may not know this, but I'm also a certified personal trainer. And a little eraser shaving there. Um, my specialty, well, you may have noticed because I do all my stretches and stuff in my classes, but my specialty is stress management and personal development. So that's probably a lot of what I'm going to be talking about. But we'll see. I don't know. I haven't really started yet. I've done a couple of podcasts. I did those for classes as sample work for my portfolio because in the program that I'm in we don't really do a thesis um, in my master's program we do a portfolio because when I go to get a job that's what they that's what the employers want to see they want to see my work and how good I am and in fact probably all of these streams would count as a part of my portfolio if I really wanted them to because I'm in instructional design and this is instruction that I've designed. <laughs> so I'm coming in and I'm doing another layer. This one I'm not being as precise about. I'm just trying to get some texture in there. Still want to slow down when you get to the edges. Like I said, it's okay to go over, but you don't want to go crazy. Same thing with our, our branch there. We don't want to go crazy and accidentally shade over it. Caught myself that time. I did it. She's growing, folks. She's growing. Okay. All right. Um... Okay, so what we did, remember what we did with the trees. We're going to kind of do that with, like, down in the, um, in the actual mountainous or hilly area. Let's see. So we'll do, we're just going to start kind of here and there. Not everywhere, but we're just going to create like kind of see, I'm just going in circles and kind of skipping areas. It doesn't have to be precise. In fact, it's better if it's not. They're all different shapes and sizes. I like to kind of catty corner mine a little bit so they're not all lined up evenly. Now they are going to look closer together in the background, like the farther back you go. A look closer together 
and I'm kind of making them in like a little bit of a half moon shape. I don't know if you can tell, like, see, there's like, you know, we're, that gives the illusion that there's rounded trees, you know, trees have like the kind of the canopy, the crown of the tree is more, you know, circular shaped at the top, rounded, circular, rounded. We can come up into some of the trees that we made earlier so they're not all lonesome by themselves. This will probably be the most tedious part of this drawing. These little hilly areas. I don't know if you guys remember from a previous stream, I like kind of the tediousness of drawing. Very relaxing. Ooh, only thing is, is sometimes it can make your hand cramp a little bit. So I'm just, if you need to do that, just stop for a little bit and stretch your hand. A good exercise you can do is pushing your hand. This is really good if you work with computers a lot. Um, you can push your hand back and hold it. Put your hand in a curl it. You can push down there. I'm just kind of crunch into it. You can push your hand down this way. These are all really good exercises. Ooh. Feels good, and that it um, stretches your wrist. If you work with computers a lot and you're constantly on a keyboard, um, that can really affect. You can get carpal tunnel, um, which is like in this area here. And uh, I have not had it, but I, my understanding is that it's very, very painful, and it can prevent you from doing your job. So if your job is computers, uh, you want to take care of that. So doing those stretches like throughout the day, you know, just stretching your hand is really good to do. Okay, so they get a little bit farther apart, more spread. As you get closer to the foreground, we're just giving the illusion that it's filled with trees.
So you kind of want to bury the darkness, bury the shape, you know, whatever you have to do so that it doesn't look mechanical, that it looks more organic. I'm also getting a little bit lighter and not going, not pressing quite as deep with my circles in the foreground. I need to put some stuff over here. I've got a whole section that doesn't really have anything, so I've got to work on that. I'm kind of fluffy. It's almost like we're putting clouds, really. Like what you think of as clouds, like this kind of fluffy, curly shapes, circular shapes. That's pretty good. Okay. I'm going to stretch my hand just again. Oh. We are going to just lightly outline our sapling shape because we don't want to lose that. So let's go ahead and blend in this area. Down in our the bottom of our hill. And I'm using pretty hard pressure, especially up at the top. And I'm going up into those trees I created in the background. blending those too so they don't have such a harsh look to them you can actually even blend the area behind them if you want all right see some areas that I, I don't like. The shapes look a little bit too much, so I'm just going to connect some of them. They look a little too inorganic. We can Remember we, how we did the circular up here? Let's do the circular down here too.
You'll notice too, similar to a pencil, if you hold your blender straight up and down, you get a more precise stroke versus when it's on the side like that. So you can kind of trade back and forth and see which one you like better. We're going to be doing our branch next. Mm -hmm. Earlier I said the trees were lonely. So now I've got a Hank Williams song in my head. About being lonely. Poor little lonely trees. Well, I guess we fixed that so that they weren't lonely. I have a couple of areas I want to come in. They're just darker than I wanted them to be, so I'm going to fudge it and pretend like I meant that to happen. So I'm just coming and doing my little circular motions down into the mountain, the hill a little bit. These are, I guess these are hills. All right, finish down here. I get sidetracked sometimes when I, when I see an area that I need it needs to be fixed. I don't want to forget about it, so a lot of times I'll go fix it right then before I forget. But of course, then it takes me away from what it was I was doing, which was continuing the blend. Before I move on to the branch, I want to just take a look at my drawing of where it is now and see if there's anything I would like to add. Um, I do see things I want to add. So before I move on, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Let's see. Over 
on the left side is looking a little mechanical, so I'm just going to come in and try to fix some of that. Just connecting things. Circular blend, and then I think we'll be done with this section. Pretty good, pretty good. I'm not like super a fan of these trees in the back, but that's okay. I mean, I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna call that section there. We're gonna go ahead and start on our branch. Um, okay, let's go ahead so this part um, there's a couple things to keep in mind we want to keep our hand up. We don't want to be putting our hand down on the paper because um, the it can smear. But then also, um, we are going to want to outline our sapling, which I'm going to use my kneaded eraser. I accidentally shaded in a little bit of mine. So I'm just pulling some of that out. I needed my eraser into a point. Do the same up here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and define our branch. So on the right side, let's come in. with our number two, I mean, well, if you're using a number two, then you're number two. And anything that's top or left side is not gonna be as dark. So we'll still shade it, but it won't be as dark. So right side and underneath are dark. Top and left are, um, or lighter. Now here and there we're gonna have buds which are kind of like an oval shape. They look almost like a thorn. Now I drew those in as I was going earlier. But if you didn't, you can add them very easily. I'm 
See, I'm just going to add a little bud here. bud there. You know what I just realized? We didn't really do our stippling effect yet, which was supposed to be down in this area. I mean, our little circular motions kind of is the stippling effect where it gives it, makes it look dotted. But that wasn't exactly stippling, so I'm going to do like a little bud here. So true stippling would be where you would dot the landscape. Now what we did is we did like kind of a simulated stippling, which is where we made it look like stippling with lots of little circles, but it wasn't. That's not true stippling. Pointillism is little dots. Oh, hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, I do. So the question is, it's do I use other mediums than pencil? Yes. So Tuesdays are my drawing classes um, and Fridays are my painting classes. And I, I go between um, uh, watercolor and acrylic. I may add more in the future, but those are the two right now. Um, if you want a full, excuse me, just a moment. If you want a full schedule of what's coming up with images, um, you can go to my website, which is goskydesign.com, or on my main Twitch page, I have a button for schedule. And if you click on that, that will take you directly to the schedule. And that will show all the different stuff that I do. Very good question. And thank you for joining us. My favorite medium is probably watercolor, even though I don't think it's my best in terms of skill, but it's my favorite. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing, so I'll get better at it. I was going to ask you what kind of art you did. So you use acrylic. Um, do you like to work like big, like big canvases or what, what types of, what's your style? Like, are you more realistic or impressionistic? Abstract. Okay, so we've outlined our branch. 
So our light source, let's see. Now what I want to do is I'm going to actually trade out to a 6B pencil. You can continue using the number two if, if that's what you're using today. Um, I'm going to go for darker. So we're going to add our shadows. More impressionistic. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, that is a style that I very much admire. Um, I'm not great at it, um, but I'm working on that. I'm working on getting better, the impressionistic style. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to take a look at where our shadow is going to be. Okay. So let's see. First, we want to figure out where our light source is. So our light source is kind of, is at the horizon line, right? So everything on the right side of our branch is going to be lighter. And so our shadow is going to be on the left side. So let's go ahead and draw some shadow over there. Well, I encourage you, Half Moon, I encourage you to join the Discord channel, which is at the bottom left-hand side of the page. Um, oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate you showing your support. I encourage you to join our Discord channel because you can share your artwork there because I would love to see your work. But thank you for joining us. As brief as it might have been, thank you. Appreciate it. So with my shadow, I'm not coming all the way around. I'm just doing the uh, left side and I'm it's kind of a choppy line I'm not paying I'm not trying so hard to make it um, a solid line All right, and don't forget the left side of like our little buds and things that come out. Um, even though they're on the right, they still have a left side. So this is going to make this look more realistic. It's really great when other artists join in because, you know, I like to see a lot of different perspectives. You know, obviously mine is not the only perspective. Um, I, I like to hear what other artists think and especially when we do our critiques. So this whole branch is dark because we're looking at the dark side of it. Let's see. I've got a little shadow here. Now the reason I'm using the 6B, if you're doing a 2B, then you just have to either go over it multiple times, or I mean um, a number two pencil, you go over it multiple times, or you um, just push harder, you know, just press more pressure. Um, the reason I'm using a 6B is so that I don't have to do that because a 6B is bolder, the higher the number the more bolder it is. So I'm trying to, this way I don't have to press as hard. If you do like drawing, I do recommend getting at least a basic drawing set. You don't have to get this one, 
This is a nicer drawing set. Um, I want to say it's like 30 to $35 at Walmart, American dollars. I don't know if you can get it on Amazon. I would imagine you probably could. Um, but there are much cheaper pencil sets. You can get pencil sets for like 10 bucks. And I, I highly recommend getting one. Usually they come with a spreader. They usually come with several of the B pencils, like a 2B, 4B, 6B. And um, it's just going to make your work a lot easier than using a number two all the time. Not that you can't. You can certainly get still get effective drawings using a number two, but it's just easier. These are tools. So like tools in any trade, they make your job easier. So the, the different kinds of tools that you have, the different kinds of jobs you'll be able to do more effectively. All right, we're back to our left side again where it's completely colored in. The left side is. I don't think I said, explained that very well. Okay. I'm finishing up on the branch. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to blend another thing I'm doing is I'm not I'm not making my left side that I'm that I'm shading in I'm not making it all the same going all the way up because you know some parts of your stick are, are coming up towards you or going away from you and so it's going to change that shadow all right so i'm going to get my blending stump here and just come in and blend now the left side is the dark side q imperial march and then the right side is light so we want to keep that relatively light and in fact I think we might come in here I have not been doing a good job of holding my hand up I think we'll come in here and we'll um, with our eraser and just erase out highlight I think that's going to be easier in the long run so let's go ahead and just blend not worry too much oh I missed a spot I missed a little spot right here just on the inside there. It's little, but it makes a difference. It would be noticeable later. Got a couple more things we need to do before we're completely finished. So first we're going to come in with our eraser and we're going to hit the highlights. Now this, it will be good if you have a kneaded eraser because we can get a really fine point on that. But worst case scenario, you'll just have to try to use the corner of uh, your regular eraser. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our eraser into a point. I think mine was still in a point from earlier. And our right side is going to be our highlight. 
So I'm just coming down. You might have to reshape it. reshaping my my eraser What's happening too is I'm ending up erasing some of my line and that's okay. That's okay because you'll still be able to see it and it's going to give it the appearance of an edge. And in fact, we're going to get our uh, blending stick. It's also called the blending stump. You might have heard me call it that earlier. And we will blend up to our edges in some places. Okay. Is there anywhere I missed? Yes, there is right here. All right, now one more thing we need to do, and this, you can use your kneaded eraser if that's what you have, or you can use a regular eraser. I'm just gonna come up and clean up the lines right at the edge of my drawing for any of those little bits that got, that went over. Always blow, don't wipe. I'm just cleaning up these lines here. That's done. Let's use our blending stump just to kind of get these edges right up to the branch, especially on the light side where we've erased out. All I'm doing is just defining the branch, defining the light side of the, the branch where maybe my eraser erased out of the landscape or it's just a little too light. You want to be really careful up in this top area because you don't want it to look like you're drawing around it. So you kind of have to blend into the surrounding uh, sky or, or mountain, whatever area you're on. By just being very light, be very, very light. Okay, I think that looks really great. Um, we can go ahead, I'm going to use my 2B pencil, I'm going to actually sharpen it again. And 
and I'm going to sign. So in this particular case, because we created, um, actually, you know what? Okay, hang tight one second. I do see an area that I want to, I'm gonna just take my eraser and very light. Remember we did the dabbing up at the top. I'm just gonna dab right around the trees. You can go over the trees, it's fine, because your trees you drew dark enough probably. It's not gonna matter, but I'm just gonna give a light effect. Maybe that was what was wrong with my trees. Maybe I just needed to, I don't know. I was not happy with the way those trees were looking. You know what, maybe we can even, let's just, let's just do it. Let's just come down. We're gonna do stippling with our eraser. Stippling with the eraser. So that's what this is. You're just coming down and doing dots. It makes it look choppy. It makes it look, there we go. Makes it look more organic. Now we do need to use our blending stump a little bit to clean some of that up. I think that was a circular motion, circular motion in this part. I'm doing very, very broad circular motions. Same thing down here. We don't need to do it too much because we want it to look more choppy, but there we go. Yeah, much better. Okay, so ready to sign it. Because we created this boundary, I'm gonna actually sign it below in the white part. So it's more like a print because that's where you would sign prints. You would sign it like in the white area below because prints you usually create a frame. So. Let's go ahead, we're gonna take a look at this. Um, if you have been following me today, then I encourage you to go over to Discord and um, so that you can upload your picture. You can take a picture of it and upload it directly to the Discord app. Um, I encourage you to do that. But I'm going to critique my work. Um, so the first thing in my critiques, I always state something that I feel is effective and something that I feel is not working um, and either I need to stop doing altogether or maybe change the way I do it. So what were we going for in this picture? Well, we wanted atmospheric perspective, which is pushing the, um, the landscape back so that it, it seems like it's going back into the background. Well, so one of the things I noticed right away is my background mountain is too dark. Now, an easy fix for this would be to bring my eraser in here and just come and do some swipes with the eraser. That's taking out way more than I would like. And then we, we blend, we re-blend. So when you're doing atmospheric perspective, stuff that's in the background is going to seem grayer in color, which of course, this doesn't matter because we're not using color, but if you were, if we were using color, if we were painting today, it would seem grayer and bluer in color because our eye begins to blend it with the sky. And it would get lighter. So a lot of times people will do darker mountains in the background, but you, actually lighter is gonna give you more of an atmospheric effect. All right, so now I'm gonna come in and blend this. Now this one we were doing straight blending, so there's no circular motion. It's still gonna look a little bit choppy because of our, um, because of the way we were erasing out, but much better, much better. It's much lighter in value. So your value is how light or dark something is. Now, I didn't really get up to this branch the way I probably, how much I should have. There we go. 
Okay. Yay. Better. Well, see, so we were able to fix that right away. So atmosphere, the atmospheric perspective or aerial perspective is what we were going for. And um, so that that's what I'm looking at to see what is effective. Um, we also want it to look realistic or relatively realistic. And one thing I noticed is that the, um, the mountains in the middle, my middle ground are, I would like those to be a little bumpier. So I'm going to actually just use my spreader and just kind of create some bumps. And I don't know if you remember, but at the beginning, um, of drawing the middle ground, we drew kind of a darker line. So it's okay if we just blend a little. But I do not want it to be just a smooth line. Because you, you do start to see some detail as things get closer to you. And that's all part of that atmospheric perspective. So I'm just blending down a little bit. Let's see. I may need to use my pencil for part of this. So I'm just grabbing my 2B pencil. I'm just kind of making it sort of bumpy. Okay. Now I can finish with the blender. I just didn't have enough enough black on my blender to make it work. Yep. All right. So good. Now it's not as smooth of a line. So there we go. Problem number two fixed. So looking at it, I'm trying to see, I think, that the, the trees in the foreground are pretty effective. I think the branch is pretty effective. Um, I could probably work on my highlights a little bit more in the branch, but I think overall it looks pretty 3D and branch-like. So I would say that other than those two issues that we've already resolved, that this achieves what we wanted it to achieve, which was to get our atmospheric perspective and to look semi-realistic. Now, if anybody has, I'm going to go over to Discord real quick and just check and see. It does not appear like anyone has updated, uh, uploaded rather, any pictures. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. So thank you very much for everyone who joined me today. Um, I love having you guys with me. And Friday we will be meeting at 6 p.m. to do a painting class. And I believe... I don't actually remember what painting class we're doing. I think it's a mountain scene. I think we're going to actually work with atmospheric perspective in a painting. Um, I, I tried to line things up so that they match in lesson plan so that you can see in both types, both media, how, um, how perspective works. So hope to see you on Friday. Thank you very much for coming and have a great day.